Okay, welcome to video number eight of the Diaries of a Coronavirologist YouTube channel. Today is the 26th of March and we are up to just under 530,000 cases of COVID-19. Those are confirmed cases, of course, and just under 24,000 deaths. Today also marks the day where China no longer sits at the top of the charts for the most cases. America has now taken that spot with 84,000 cases compared to China's approximately 82,000. Today I want to talk about the disease. So COVID-19, coronavirus disease 2019, and how the SARS-2 coronavirus causes this disease. To start talking about the way SARS-2 causes disease, I just want to do a bit of basic virology, but very quickly. So viruses can only infect cells that have an appropriate receptor on them. An often used analogy is that a receptor is like a lock and the virus has the key. So any cell that has said lock, the virus can open the door, go in, infect, make more copies of itself, cause as much damage as it wants, and then it leaves and goes and does the same thing. So the, the receptor, the lock on the cells, uh, our cells, is a protein called ACE2. So this is angiotensin converting enzyme 2. The key on the virus side is a protein called spike. So if you think about the pictures you see of coronaviruses going around, there's sort of always a ball with little spiky bits coming out of the top. And it's those spiky bits that are called spike, conveniently, that attach to the receptor. As a side note, the name coronavirus comes from the fact that those spiky bits kind of look like a crown or the sun's corona and that uh, the latin for crown is corona and the sun's corona that's just a side note for anyone interested so ace2 determines what cells or which cells the virus can infect ACE2 is found on cells throughout our lungs, as well as cells of the digestive system and the heart. So when SARS-2 comes into the lungs, I should also say SARS-1 uses the same receptor, so there's quite a lot of similarity here. It can then infect cells that have ACE2. Once the virus goes in, it can then start to cause damage and kill those cells. And as those cells die, they break away from the lining of the lungs and start to fill the spaces in the lungs that are needed for gas exchange. So as you get this buildup of debris, you start to inhibit gaseous exchange and start to limit the ability to oxygenate your blood, causing shortness of breath and coughing. Moreover, as the lining of the airways breaks down, there's a possibility that fluid starts to leak in, again, filling up those spaces that are needed for gaseous exchange. It gets worse. The, the ACE2 protein that the virus uses is found on cells known as type 2 pneumocytes. And these cells produce surfactant, which is a soapy kind of substance that reduces surface tension in the smaller parts of the, air uh, the airways. So as the virus kills those cells, there's less surfactant and therefore there's a buildup in surface tension, which can again lead to collapsing of these small spaces and a reduction in gaseous exchange, causing all of the respiratory problems. And all of this can lead to something known as ARDS, A-R-D-S, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Now it can get worse from here. The immune system can then come in and cause damage. So the immune system is very good for fighting viruses, but it can also be detrimental to our bodies. So if the immune system comes in and it, go, it gets hyperactive, it sees all this damage, all the stuff that it needs to deal with, it can cause too much inflammation. It can release too many proteins that drive an inflammatory response and cause something called a cytokine storm. So cytokines are proteins that drive the inflammatory response, they cause fever and all these sorts of things. But a hyperactive inflammatory response can cause damage to our own cells, again, breaking down the linings of the airways and leading to all the problems that the virus directly causes itself. All of this then limits the ability to oxygenate the blood and that can then have knock-on effects because we need oxygen in the blood to maintain the function of all our other organ systems. 
So if you can't properly oxygenate your blood, this can cause wider problems in the body. So why some people develop these really severe symptoms of COVID-19 versus others who just develop a mild condition or no symptoms at all remains a little bit unclear. It's still stuff to be studied there. We know aspects of underlying health conditions and age that can lead to more severe disease, but I'll discuss those more in a future video. The last little thought I want to leave you with is that all this damage that the virus can cause can have long lasting effects. And this is actually something that was seen in follow-up studies from people who survived the SARS-1 viral infection. So all that damage in the lungs can lead to fibrosis and this can lead to reduced lung function from potentially years to come. And that was what was seen with SARS-1. So just because you get this virus and you survive doesn't necessarily mean everything is going to be great after. That was a fairly somber note to end on, but I ended on it specifically because it's connected to what I want to talk about in my next video, which is the fact that surviving infection looks like people are developing immunity. So it looks like people aren't going to be getting reinfected with this virus, which is great for those people. And it's also great for a potential treatment through using convalescent plasma. But that's for my video tomorrow or Saturday. We'll see how workload goes. And I'll talk about that more then. So thank you for watching. Please keep sharing and commenting and asking questions and subscribing to the channel if you're finding these videos interesting or of any value at all. And as always, please stay safe, wash your hands, stop panic buying toilet paper, and keep calm and carry on. We will get through this pandemic and these crazy corona times we live in. Thanks for watching.